Please be quiet in the back. Okay. No, no, it's not online yet. Yeah. Okay, now you're online. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. My name, um, my name is Alyssa LeBlanc, and I'm the president. My name is Tyler Silva. I'm the investigative officer. My name is Ozan Duty, and I'm the assistant officer assistant. I'm Caleb Bashirs, and I'm the eyewitness. All right, we're studying the R-22 Beta-2 helicopter, and here's some pictures of it. And as the president and the psychologist, um, the pilot showed no signs of drug abuse, alcohol, cyanide, eth ethanol, or any other description is in the blood during the time of the flight. And also she was killed with blunt, <coughs> multiple like, injuries, and she, had not flown for a minimum of 46 hours. So I think she was probably lazy during the time of the flight, so. Um, when, when, what, and who? The crash was, the crash occurred on January 20th, 2011 in Prescott, AZ. Her name, pilot's name was Sandra Johnson and she was 41 years old. And she was certified FAA pilot, private pilot and she was alone and maybe she was distracted. Uh, the sky conditions were clear and the wind was blowing north northwest at five miles per hour. The temperature was 39.9 Fahrenheit with relatively humidity levels of 62 degrees percent. <laughs> the dew point was 28.0 degrees Fahrenheit and air pressure was 30.28 inches. And as you can see, there are pictures of the rotor. <laughs> and we have an eyewitness. On January 20th, um, I was on a walk with my dog. And I noticed that unusually, like there was always helicopters and stuff above me, but I noticed that it was spinning out of control. And, um, the, when I looked up, I saw it, and the back of it had hit the rotors, and then it fell. Yeah. That's gone. Okay. All right, we have some of the crashes of the R-22. <laughs> and here's this one that we um, viewed. It. We actually found a similar picture online when we were looking for pictures of the R-22. We found this online. We had no idea how it got there, but we found it. And we have an investigative officer assistant. My job is to make sure that the aircraft is in standard and prepared for flight, that it is in, it's ready for flight when it needs to take off, that there's nothing wrong with it, that um, the rotors, the gas, the oil, everything like that is make, uh, maintained and checked. and. What I believe that what happened during the crash is that there wasn't a proper inspection and there was, they were lacking, um, they, were, they didn't check it all the way as they usually do. <sighs> okay, that's all. All right. <clears throat> and our conclusion, investigative officer Tyler Silver. So there was red paint found on the propellers from the danger sign on the back of the tail of the, of the helicopter. And um, what we found out in research is that if the helicopter moves too quickly, it causes the propeller to arc, arc up. And after we did all the research, search and everything, we concluded that the propellers most likely hit the tail when it came up and caused the helicopter to go down. And here's a map of Prescott Law Field. That's where the accident, the incident happened, the crash happened. And that's it. All right, let's give a round of applause. <laughs> um, can you call up the, the paperwork? The paperwork? This, right? <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> And what you present that to the oh sorry present that to the group.
Okay, yeah. ready? Yeah. Wait, we can right. see the screen. Okay, hold it. Hold it, please. All right. The date of the crash, it happened on the 20th of January 2011, and at the time of 11.53 in the morning. And it also happened in Prescott Loft Field in Arizona. And the witness, one of the witnesses stated that the helicopter went down just off Willow Creek Road. And our pilot's information. Okay. The pilot's name was Sarah Sandra Johnson. She was 41 years old. She didn't fly. She didn't fly the R22 intoxicated, but she did fly for six hours straight before the crash. And from the what is that thing? Toxicology. From the toxo toxicology report, there, there was nothing wrong with the pilot, and she she was in metal. She was in a medical class three. Miss Johnson died because of multiple blunt force injuries. Pilot body found approximately seven feet from the crash. And damage, um, the damage to the aircraft? So the routers, the router skids, propellers, and cockpit found in the relative area. The tail was not found in the relative area with the rest of the aircraft. Cockpit was found on its side with the missing roof, looked to be ripped off. Class Glass from windshield shattered, front panel crushed, belly contact. Left door was found approximately three feet in bushes. Propellers were found bent, broken, torn, and frayed. Impact, impact fractures, horizontal and vertical scraping. Red paint found on yellow tips. One propeller looks to be broken off. The other has been cut post-crash. Some of the front panels survived the crash. Router trim adjustment was on lowest setting. Auto ELT was on. The cycle friction was off. The carb heat pole was locked off. And the compass was pointing east. Rusted gear located in engine. Uh, and possibilities, when we first did it, we said that it could be possible collision, uh, no engine failure, failure, and rusted gear located in the, in the engine, as you said, and could be exposure of lack of oil in the aircraft, and fatigue or distraction, or a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tree. <laughs> Um, or a hero report? Um, the hero report. On May 3rd, 2003, the student pilot owner of an R-22 was practicing a confined area procedure a few miles north of the airport. The helicopter sank in the snow on landing, causing the tail rotor to strike. The tail boom and tail rotor drive shaft, the tail rotor gearbox, and the tail rotor were damaged. The pilot was not injured. All right, our final conclusion. After weeks of research, we discovered that the pilot could have been fatigued after six hours of flight and also the change of helicopter in such a short period of time. And we also discovered that there were no controls in the manual and that changes the, the rudder's motion, meaning if the helicopter moves too quickly, it could cause the propeller to act, arc, um, yeah, which caused the propeller to, like, Lightly to hit the tail. And during the investigation, we found red evidence of red paint on the propeller from the danger sign on the tail. All right, everybody, get a round of applause, please. Okay, now we're going to be one comment from each group, uh, constructive criticism. You stand up, say your name, give them some positive feedback, give them some constructive feedback. And you guys need to be ready to receive that. Uh, H, H2, hybrid 2, who's that? Stand up, you can start criticizing somebody. I liked how it was very organized. How you guys all seem to like get it all on the same page. Thank you. Okay, so that's positive, so now give them some constructive criticism. Um, you guys kind of stuttered a little bit. I was a little bit stuttering. You guys are kind of like nervous. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's start that over. Remember, I stand up, introduce yourself. Hello, how are you doing? My name is Cadet Smith. 
Andre, and you take their constructive criticism. Thank you, Cadet and Andre. I really appreciate constructive criticism. We'll do something to do that again. Okay. Okay. Start up. I like how you guys were. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> my name is. <laughs> Hello, my name is Dakota DeAndre. Um, I liked how you guys were very organized, although you guys seemed nervous. Thank you, Cadet DeAndre. I will definitely. We will take that consider <laughs> into consideration. Great. Thank you. All right. Super. We got that. Hate is painful. H3, please. <laughs> Group three. Huh? How long have you been that master here? I really enjoyed the fact that you were extensive and thorough in your presentation. I just think you guys might want to work on making it a little bit more interesting so it stays in our minds a little bit. Thank you, Cadet Massinger. We'll definitely take your feedback and consideration. Four. <laughs> Hi, my name is Cadet Kennedy, and uh, I quite liked your presentation. However, what I would suggest for future reference is. Okay. Um, you were just reading from the prompt. Okay. Uh, I would suggest maybe taking a little bit off of the prompt, but elaborating more in person. So you're not just looking at that, you're looking around the audience. Thank you, Cadet Kennedy. We'll definitely take your... Thank you. Take consideration. Thank you. <laughs> Next! I'm Cadet Legarski, and... Uh, I liked your presentation. It was pretty well organized. Thank you. But I felt that uh, the president did a lot of the talking, and the rest just kind of fished in at the last section. Thank you, Kadena <laughs> Lewandowski. All right, next. Hello, I'm Cadet Stop Mark, and I really enjoyed your presentation. I thought it was interesting because it was a helicopter, and I didn't know a lot about helicopters, <laughs> so that was enlightening to me. Um, I suppose what I could give back as um, feedback as far as constructive criticism goes was maybe to uh, be a little bit louder, like project your voice a little bit more, but other than that, I thought it was great. Thank you, Cadet Stockmeyer. I do <laughs> take your opinion into consideration. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, everybody give them a round of applause. got plenty of pictures of you already, thank you very much. Okay, what uh, hybrid one, y'all have the toughest job, because you've gone first, yes. but I assume, like I said, like all the assignments have been, that y'all have seen all the other people, the really the toughest ones. We had what? help from one of the other students. Great, great, well that's really good, that's the way it should be, right? Yes. Um, talk to me about, <coughs> there it is, what is a finding? Finding? What is a finding? That was on our possibilities, sir. No, but what is a finding? Oh, it's what you find. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody in the room help them with what a finding on a aircraft investigation is? Yes. A discovered part. A discovered part. No. No. Yes, sir. It's a fact that it goes detail. It's a historical fact. Okay. And so, in your assignment, Okay, when I talk about the Word documents, and we say a list of findings, did y'all have a list of findings? Awesome. Okay, a finding is like the plane was built. And I, and I can't, you know, I'm not going to specify here, but, but you know, you go through a, a chronological list of findings all the way to the plane crashed. Okay, so then what is a cause? What we believe caused the crash. A cause is one finding that if you take out of the list, it doesn't crash. Did you watch the assignments on YouTube? Personally, I did not, sir. Okay, you did not. Did you read the assignments? No, not with that. You didn't read all the assignments. Get Silva, did you read all the assignments? Yes, sir. Okay, well, great. What is a recommendation then? To turn in all of this also and be more. Just remember what we're supposed to do. No, no. In an evaluation, what is a list of recommendations and rationale? What does that mean? Can anybody help them here? Okay, this was part of your assignment. It was six weeks ago when we started this whole pro presentation. I went through two days talking about findings, causes, and recommendations. He actually talked about it at Emma Riddle pretty extensively. It was in the handout. 
that, that y'all got, okay? Why are we talking in the back? Can y'all please stand attention, whoever's talking, y'all stop it. The recommendation is how do you fix the cause so that it doesn't happen again, okay? Um, so in this, what is a possibility? Possibility, like what could cause the... What could cause it? Yes. So, so what's the answer to your six weeks of work here? What is the reason your plane crashed? <coughs> uh, we came up with multiple. Um, one, she could be tired of... She was tired. She had fatigue. All right, so then when you do that, you have she's fatigued. Why? Because she's on, she hasn't flown for the past 46 hours, and she just transferred to a new aircraft, and she was probably not accustomed to it, and then it was just a long time. Okay, hold on. You said fatigue, then you talked about schedule, then you talked about aircraft. So what, what was the one reason, <laughs> the cause that your plane crashed? I caused that the plane crash. Uh, the rotor was moving too fast, which caused the tail to arc, and then it hit the. Okay. Hit so the when he says on that, what should you guys say? Why? Why? Why did the rotor hit the tail? There wasn't a proper check on the helicopter. Okay, great. Why was there not a proper check on the helicopter? Because the maintainer didn't do his job. Oh, maintainer. Now, I haven't heard that. I heard fatigue. I heard scheduling aircraft. But now we have maintainer. So then why was the maintainer not doing the job? Because he didn't show up for work. Well, you're making this up, right? Okay, but, um, this is what we should have been investigating here for this whole time. And if you would have had a list of the, you know, the, the chronological order of the entire thing, maybe the maintainers weren't there. But what is the one thing you could have taken out and what says, what, the pilot could have been fatigued after six hours and a change in the helicopter short period of time. You got to decide one thing. You know, I mean, you, you can't, you're trying to explain this to the, to the insurance board, the helicopter company, the, uh, what, farmer's land that is destroyed or whatever, whatever the problem was. You, you, you're supposed to come up with one or maybe two axes. If you remove them from the list, then the plane would not have crashed. Okay, so that's kind of what we were looking for. And it was certainly on the presentations that if you had done your homework, if you had read your assignment, then you had already seen me had this exact same discussion with other 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 ones. Okay, might have helped you. Yes. Mind if I go to the bathroom? Is it an emergency enough to interrupt a YouTube video? Yeah, I thought it was off, but. <laughs> I really appreciate it, Alex. It will be recorded forever for that one. <laughs> and the answer is no. Okay, so do you understand when you have an assignment, when I'm talking to you as an adult, you generally want to read the assignment first. Yes, sir. And if the teacher is kind enough to let you have 10 examples to show you 10 tests beforehand, and you have a test today, what might you want to do before you come have your test today? Go look at the other tests that have already been presented and the constructive criticism of it, okay? Yes, sir. All right, does anybody else have anything else? All right, that concludes.